Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm very excited to be showcasing this Seaburst Pyrotronics CP-2ER Fire Alarm Suppression Panel. So we're going to get into how the panel works and also give a quick demonstration. So you can see right here I have two smoke detectors wired up to zone 1 and zone 2 on the panel. If there are more than two smoke detectors on the system they'll be staggered between the two zones on the panel. Um, so what would happen is that when uh, one of the smoke detectors goes off on one of the zones, it would end up sounding the general alarm, telling people in the building to evacuate and also in the suppressed area. Then what would happen is that if, a, if the fire got bigger and more smoke filled the room, it would set off another detector on the other zone, um, which would then start a 10 second countdown, which is configurable. And during that time, the discharge alarm will pulse. Now, when the 10 seconds runs out, the discharge alarm will switch to a solid, steady tone. And the discharge relay, which controls the solenoid on the tanks of the suppressant agent, would then release the suppressant agent through a whole bunch of nozzles in the room, putting out the fire. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and test that by setting off one of the smoke detectors by you pressing the button on it using the screwdriver. All right. You can see that sets off zone one, sounding the general alarm, and it will sit like this as long as only one smoke detector activates. All right, and then we'll go ahead and activate the other smoke detector, and that will start the 10 second countdown. And after 10 seconds, it switches to a steady tone, and the agent would be discharged into the room. We can go ahead and silence the panel using this switch. All right, and the panel has been silenced. You can see both zones went into alarm. The discharge light was flashing and then it discharged, went to a steady tone. So during that pre-discharge time when the alarm is pulsing, you could actually abort the discharge using an abort station. Um, pressing the abort button would give you 90 seconds to go back to the panel, turn it off, or um, you can wait uh, until the 90 seconds is up. It will start pulsing again like it was, and then the, um, the countdown will begin again, and then you can hit it again, and it will give you another 90 seconds. I do not have one of those abort stations hooked up, uh, mostly because 90 seconds is a bit long to demonstrate in this video, um, so um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but I do have a manual discharge pull station hooked up right here. So with the manual discharge pull station, one of two things can happen. You can configure it for two different ways. Um, when you pull it, um, it could immediately discharge the suppressant agent into the room. And then the way I have it configured is that when you pull it, it starts that 10 second countdown. Uh, the 10 second countdown, by the way, is actually configurable using this little dial right here. You can set it up for a whole bunch of different timings. I think it goes up to about 45 seconds. So what we'll go ahead, you can see everything's still in alarm. We'll go ahead and reset the panel using the reset switch right here. All right, and we'll go ahead and pull the manual discharge pull station. Here we go. And then you'll see after 10 seconds, there it goes. And we'll go ahead and uh, silence that real quick. It's pretty loud. Um, and then I have a key right here. We'll go ahead and reset that pull station single-handedly. A little difficult, especially when it's not mounted to the wall. All right, there we go. And yeah, so you can see I, I just use the silence switch right here and the reset switch. We also have a supervisory silence for if there's any issues with the um, the agent, uh, the cylinders. Um, that would be for like cylinder pressure, stuff like that. Um, there's also a release disconnect right here, um, which can, will cause an agent discharge trouble. That's if you want to test this system without the suppressant being released to the room. It's just kind of an insurance. Um, and you can see I have the trouble silence right now. I do have a few troubles on the panel. Um, I have all the end of line resistors installed, but for some reason it's not sensing all of them. Uh, I've checked all the values of the resistor with the wiring diagram, which is right here. I'll give you a clean shot of that if you want to see it. Uh, that's also in the manual, which you can find online. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty neat panel. Um, it's actually the first uh, fire suppressant panel I've ever worked on. Um, and, yeah, they're pretty neat. It uses fully discrete logic, and uh, I'm pretty happy to have this in my collection. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more fire alarm content like this, I make system test videos using the system I've installed into my Ravens Last Shop. And um, I'm hoping to make a few more videos as I get more equipment like this. 
So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.